Hey y'all, this video is a lesson on a shortcut for completing the square. So in one of my previous videos, I did the traditional method for completing the square. If you're looking for that, you might go back to that video. But in this one, we will be looking at using the vertex to help us achieve our goal. In either case with the traditional method or the shortcut, it is a little bit of a long process but I feel like the shortcut is just a little bit shorter and just a little bit easier. There is less to remember, especially if you already know how to find the vertex using the formula. We can kind of double dip and use that again for this method. And then we'll also use vertex form to help us complete our <laughs> process. In this first example, I have x squared plus 6x equals 7. And before we can get started, we want to put everything on the same side, which is standard form. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c, which means that we need everything on the same side. So if we go over to this example, what that would look like is subtracting 7 over to the left. And we have our standard form. And this follows the pattern that we're looking for. And from that, we can name the A, B, and C values. And this will help us further in this problem. And then also, if you're going to be learning quadratic formula, that will help you. The formula for finding the vertex is x equals negative b over 2a. And since we already identified b and a, we can plug that into our formula to find the x-coordinate of our vertex. So negative b, which is 6, over 2 times a, which is 1. Negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. So the x-coordinate is negative 3. This is not only the x-coordinate of the vertex, but also the axis of symmetry. So if you have been asked to find an axis of symmetry, the equation of the line for the axis of symmetry, this is that. Now, we have an x-coordinate of the vertex, but a vertex is a point. So we need the y-coordinate. If we have the x-coordinate and the function, what do you think we're going to do with that x-coordinate? Plug it in. So next step, we find y by plugging in negative 3 for x, which means we have negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 minus 7. And we get 9 minus 18 minus 7 is negative 16. So we have our x-coordinate and our y-coordinate, which makes the vertex negative 3, negative 16. So you might be wondering, OK, that's great. I found the vertex. How does that help me? We can use the vertex to help us put the equation that we have in vertex form. We know that vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And if you recall from vertex form, when you're given the vertex, the vertex represents h and k, which means that we have these two pieces, y and x are going to stay the same, and we need a. Well, guess what? We have a also. We found it up here. So that looks like y equals a, which is 1, times x minus h, which is negative 3, plus k, which is negative 16. And then inside the parentheses, we can simplify. I'm going to leave out the 1 because we don't typically write that. And that's vertex form. So if you have been asked to complete the square to get an equation into vertex form, or if it just says write this equation in vertex form, this is the process you do for that. 
that will be complete. That's done. But in this case, we're actually solving. We're trying to find what x equals, which indicates we're looking for an x-intercept. And if you recall, an x-intercept has a y value of 0. So down here, when we're going to solve, we'll take our equation that we wrote and set it equal to 0 for the x-intercept, and then solve using the square root property, which means we're going to add 16 And then to undo a square, we square root both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. The square root of 16 is 4. x plus 3 gets to come out because of those inverse operations. And then subtract 3, which gives us our two solutions. We now have negative three plus four as one solution and negative three minus four as the other solution, which simplifies to negative seven and one. We've solved by completing the square. So without going through all the traditional method of completing the square by moving C and finding the new C and then factoring and then, you know, all the stuff, this is a little bit faster. Now it did still take up a whole page, especially if you're writing big like I did, but I feel like it's a little bit easier to remember and a little bit easier to execute given that you can do this step. If you can do this step, then this is plug and play and this is solve. And those are all things that we've already learned. So it should be a little bit easier. Now let's go to the next example. In my completing the square video, the traditional one, when we had a coefficient here, we had to pull the coefficient out and it kind of made things a little bit complicated because it gave us one more thing that we had to remember and we really just don't need that. So in this scenario, in this uh, shortcut, I'll say, you don't have to pull out the two. You can just leave it as is. Now this is in standard form because everything's on the same side which means now we can identify A, B, and C, which will help us with our next steps. Now, I want to encourage you, if you feel confident, pause the video and try these next two steps on your own and then come back and check. In the first part, we're using the vertex formula. So we are plugging in our values negative b over 2 times a. And we end up with this minus a negative, which becomes a positive 4 over positive 4 is 1. Now that we have our y coordinate, we can, I'm uh, sorry, our x coordinate, now we can find our y coordinate 2 times x squared minus 4 times x minus one, then simplify. Two times one squared is two, minus four times one minus one, and we get negative three. So we have now our vertex is one negative three, which represents H and K. Then we can use vertex form and plug in the pieces. Now remember, y and x stay because we're trying to write the equation. And that means that a changes to 2, h changes to 1, and k changes to negative three, and that's vertex form. So if it were to ask you for vertex form, this would be done. That's complete, the end. But we're actually solving. So we're gonna take it one step further and set it equal to zero.
to solve for x. And in order to do that, we need to add 3 first. Then we need to get rid of that coefficient. So we divide by 2 next. And now we can take the square root. And this is going to look a little funny, but bear with me. Depending on what your homework or book or whatever is asking for, if it wants a decimal solution, then this doesn't really matter and you don't really have to worry about it. But if it wants an exact solution, we're going to have to do some finagling to simplify it. Before I start simplifying, I am going to finish the problem here. I'm going to add 1. 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2 is x. Yay, great, we did it, but it's not quite simplified. So if you're trying to find decimal solutions, you could type in your two different solutions here. And you would do that by, I'll show you. I'm gonna pull up this app. This is a different calculator than what I normally use, but I actually like this one better. It's called Graph in Calc 83. It was free and it does everything that a TI-83 does. So it's awesome. And then you'll also notice that I changed it to purple because I love purple. Um, not the point, but this is the calculator I'm using. This is on my iPad, but I also have it on my phone and it's so cute. It is the cutest calculator ever. And the point of what I'm doing is to type in this. So if it had asked for decimal solutions, you can type in one plus, second x squared for the square root, 3 over 2. And some calculators are going to want you to close a parentheses. This particular calculator does not. And that gives you the decimal. And then you do minus for the second case. And that gives you the other decimal. So if it's looking for decimal answers, those are your solutions and you're done. If it's looking for exact solutions, then we're going to have to use some square root properties. Whoops. And we're going to break up this fraction into two different square roots, the quotient of two different square roots. Now, the problem is I've got this square root in the denominator, and that means that this is not completely simplified. So in order to get rid of that, I'm going to go up here and I'm gonna continue because I've run out of room. In order to simplify this right here, the easiest way for this particular case is to multiply by what's whatever is in the denominator. And luckily this one turns out pretty nice. And then we can use our more properties of square roots and we can multiply what's underneath. And then what's the square root of four? Two. So we have successfully simplified this as far as it would go. And basically what that means is you do not want a square root in the denominator. And then you go through this process to make that not be there. And that makes our final exact solution x equals 1 plus or minus square root 6 over 2. And you can also write this as two different solutions, 1 minus square root 6 over 2 and 1 plus square root 6 over 2. So we have successfully solved by completing the square using the shortcut. That's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I would be happy to help. See you in the next one.